Here we go with section two one day one work. And this is part two video of this day one. And we are going to go through examples C and D. All right, so I want to use the limit process to find the derivative and recall that the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h will give us the derivative. So f, f prime of x is equal to, I need to evaluate this first at x plus h. So I'm going to have 2 over and instead of x i'm going to put in x plus h i'm evaluating the function f at x plus h minus now i need to evaluate this function at x and that would look like 2 over x plus 1 and i did forget to write the word limit in front the limit as h goes to zero this will provide us with the derivative, all the numerator gets divided by h, the denominator. In order to do this, I could try to plug in 0. You just try it. Well, I've got a problem because I'm trying to divide by 0. So we are going to have to do some algebraic manipulation to get around that dilemma there. And I think the correct course of action would be to multiply uh, each of the numerator, each of the fractions in the numerator by an, um, a, a number to get us into an LCD. So let's make an LCD on the second line, the limit as h goes to 0. My LCD is going to be um, x plus h plus 1 times an x plus 1. So this is going to be 2 over x plus h plus 1 times, I need an x plus 1 to get that LCD, minus 2 over x plus 1 from up above. And that needs to be multiplied by an a x plus h plus 1 over x plus h plus 1. I now have a common denominator. Don't forget that this was all over h. Next line, let's do some simplifying. My common denominator was an x plus h plus 1 times an x plus 1. I do not see an advantage to foiling that out at this time, maybe later, but right now I'm going to leave it be. On the top, now I'm going to take my 2 and distribute, giving me a 2x plus 2. I'm going to take a negative 2 and distribute it. So I was thinking of this plus minus idea. That'll give me minus 2 minus 2h minus 2. Oh, I forgot x. Minus 2x on the first. All right. Things are looking up, I think, because I noticed that some things will add up to 0. So my next line is going to be simplifying. 2x and a minus 2x makes 0. A negative. 2 and a positive 2 create 0, and that leaves me 2h over my common denominator. And then I'm going to choose to multiply this h divided by 1. I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal instead of division there. This is great. The h is um, reduced to 1 and leaves me the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 2 over x plus h plus 1, x plus 1. We can substitute our 0 in, giving an answer here. The limit, oh, let's just put in um, 0, x plus 1 times x plus 1, so that'll make x plus 1 quantity squared. And from here to here, we um, let h equal 0. And that got us to that line. And there's our derivative of our function f. d is our last one. It says, find the slope of the graph at the point 
x equals 7. Well, that let's do that at the end, and let's just go ahead and calculate the limit. The limit as h goes to 0 of um, x plus h plus 2 minus the square root of x plus 2 divided by h. How did I get that? Well, I recall that the definition for a derivative is the limit at f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So let's do the limit as h goes to 0. Oh, I can't plug in h, can I? I can't plug in 0 for h that I'm dividing. Well, how did we handle these when we were in chapter 1? We took and multiplied by the conjugate. So the conjugate to our numerator will look like plus between the two radicals. x plus h plus 2 plus the square root of x plus 2. This should help. This should help us out. So we're going to multiply on top. Really, I'm foiling on top, and I get the square root times the square root will leave me this quantity under it because it's squaring, and then square rooting to squaring brings this out, minus the outers multiplied gives me a positive. The inners multiplied gives me a negative. They add up to 0, and I get the last thing being squared, which is x plus 2 squaring the square root. We'll make that go away and leave me the x plus 2 all over h. Be really note, uh, careful that you notice that we've got this minus going on in between. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, distribute that negative. Then let's simplify. This whole process is the f prime of x, and it's not writing very well. f prime of x equals, okay. Summing things up, I get x with a negative x goes to 0. A 2 with a negative 2 makes it 0. I get h over h, but I, oopsie, I see what I did, because that's just way too simple. I lost track of this, didn't I? I have h times square root x plus h plus 2 plus the square root of x plus 2. Cool. Now bring that down. And then it won't look quite as simple, will it? Okay, so now I'm left with this h on top, h on the bottom. It is a multiplying scenario, so I can take h and um, divide it by h getting 1. And now I think we will have our answer of 1 over the square root. If I let h go to 0, I get square root of x plus 2 added with the square root of x plus 2, which results in 2 times, let me get 1 over 2 times x plus 2, and that is my general derivative. Now, they ask for f prime of 7, and I can simply plug in 7 where I had my x to evaluate this. And I get 1 times 2, or 1 over 2 times 3, which gives us 1 sixth. f prime of 7 equals 1 sixth. Nice. All right, that completes the notes, and your homework is to do page 103. And these top problems, you really can simply um, think about slope as 1, 2, 3, up 3, over 1. We are seeing a slope of 3 over 1 there. So thank you very much.